In 1917, more than four million Americans marched off to war to free Europe from tyranny. Today, only one of those Americans remains. This is the story of Frank R. Buckles, the last doughboy. I knew that I would be among those who were the last, but I never realized I would be the one. I had, I started keeping a record of the survivors of, of some years ago. I'm now 107. I was born on my father's farm in Harrison County, Missouri on February the 1st, 1901. I was only 11 years old when the Titanic was sunk. Spanish-American War was quite prevalent when I was a boy. War is a fascinating thing to a young boy because he isn't afraid of anything. When the United States declared war on April 6, 1917, Frank hurried to the first recruiting station. I was then 16. The Marine Corps sergeant told me that I was not old enough. He said, you have to be 21. So I enlisted in the United States Regular Army on 14th of August, 1917. I sailed for France on the Carpathia, the ship that went to the rescue of the Titanic. Submarines were not selective in their choice of victims, and we were without escort. I just wanted to get to France in a hurry. General Pershing was the ideal person who represented us in Europe. He had instructions to keep the American units together until we formed an army. We already had two million over in, in Europe, and the French were very glad to see us. I had several assignments. I got into the motor pool. I drove motorcycles first and uh, an ambulance. I saw arm missing, leg missing. Then I was in charge of the warehouse at uh, Central P, or at least I thought I was. I ended up with a prisoner of war escort company. In November of 1918, following the largest land battle in history, the Great War finally came to an end. If America had not entered the war, we would have lost, no question. The saddest thing about World War I was after the war, not during the war. The parades were all over when I came back. We had some poor million veterans out looking for jobs. So I signed up at a business school. I'd meet disabled veterans missing an arm or a leg. They were getting $80 a month for one year. I'm very sympathetic to the DAV disabled American veterans. Well, I had no reason to ask for any help. And I got a job with the White Star Line. For the next 20 years, Frank sailed to nearly every part of the world, working as a steward on luxury liners and cargo ships. Then, war changed his life again. The day of the Pearl Harbor attack, I was in Manila. On the 2nd of January, the Japanese took over, and 
I went with 800 men up to Los Banos prison camp. For three years, Frank and his comrades struggled to survive under harsh Japanese taskmasters. The sad part of it was starvation. Many of them died. Anybody who escaped, they would take 10 or 20 people and execute them. No question about it. We had seen American planes flying over the camp. We knew that MacArthur had already arrived. The Japanese were going to exterminate the prisoners, and they had set the 23rd for execution. That morning, there were nine planes flying over. But then the paratroopers started dropping. Everybody was excited because nobody had ever heard of paratroopers. In one of the most daring operations of the war, U.S. airborne troops rescued the POWs just minutes before they were to be killed. When I went out the door, I said, my gosh, I'm free. I can go any damn place I want to now. Since 1954, Frank has owned and run a 330-acre farm in West Virginia. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in World War I. I started getting letters from the French president uh, as to my service, and much to my surprise, three Americans received the Légion d'Honneur. And now they're down to one. Yeah. Well, the secret of longevity is to have a strong desire to live and to survive. I want to be remembered as one who throughout his lifetime has made his own decisions, either good or bad. That answer. The DAV is proud to salute Frank Buckles, the last doughboy.